everyone. I'm Donna Fiducia. And I'm Don Newen. And this is Cowboy Logic Radio. And welcome to Cowboy Logic Good Radio, evening, everyone. ladies and gentlemen. I'm Don Newen, and I need to be the first to welcome each and every one of you to tonight's absolutely riveting first episode of 2020, Cowboy Logic Radio. Boy, have we got a big one for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Back to you, Donna Fiducia. It's 2020. We are rounding the turn and heading for home, folks. And you know what 2020 means, Donna? Uh, It's an election year. It means that we've got about 11 months, 10 and a half months of absolute insanity at a rabid level from unidentifiable people, people that we can't even relate to as fellow human beings. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I mean liberals. People we are blocking now on Facebook because it's just is not worth it. As I said the other night, um, I, I stuck a post up, Donna. I don't know if you even saw this one. And I said, blocking trolls, people that <laughs> troll me on Facebook, is actually a cathartic experience. Yeah, I guess it is. By and the you way, know what? They're all your damn friends. Well, it's because people heard me in New York and can't believe I started in rock radio and then did a 180. And by the way, we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. But let me just say one thing. Uh, Now, Sean Hannity is giving a countdown. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you definitively it's 301 days to the election. All righty then. Okay. May I say... Thanks, Sean. Sean can do simple math. We have lost the most revered military leader. It's a shame. Should we have a moment of silence for him, Donna? No. I don't think so! (laughs) But Trump is a (laughs) racist and a liar. There was an imminent attack, so he said, and what does the mainstream media say? Well, right decision, wrong commander in chief actually was said by somebody oh, I know. On, uh, on fake news. Ladies and gentlemen, I couldn't believe if you what I'm can hearing. identify with one damn thing that the mainstream media, the liberal pukes in the mainstream media, by the way, Denise Simon on the drive time sit rep mm-hmm. called them liberal pukes. Did she? I said, you she used my favorite it. word to describe a liberal <laughs> puke. It's <laughs> too funny. We'll hear that tomorrow. Okay, so the most revered military leader is gone. This is a guy who killed hundreds of Americans, folks. This is a guy who is the mastermind for the. Actually, he's the right arm and a very strong right arm of the Ayatollahs. This is like saying. You know, we killed Hitler and we feel bad for it. You, you know the way they show Forrest Gump isms on speaking of Facebook, where it says, and just like that, you know, something happened. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, the latest thing is, and just like that, Donald Trump got the Democrats to take the side of terrorists. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it is amazing, Donna. I mean, this guy wasn't an Islamic scholar, though, even though ISIS isn't. Ice isn't uh, Islamic. I mean, it's just. <laughs> hey, we've only got a we got a few minutes, and then we're going to play something kind of special for you. But I, I so gotta, I can't learn to code uh, for the next couple of minutes. I can't learn to code. Since I don't even I, know what that means. Well, the coal miners. Joe Biden thinks coal miners need to learn to code since they're going to lose their job. Joe Biden needs to focus on being a father. Mike to Bloomberg, Hunter, because I think Hunter is in a lot of trouble. You know, Mike Bloomberg is a rising star now in the polls. And you know what he says he's going to do if he's elected? He's not going he's to... He's going to stand up. <laughs> Besides that, you'd never notice. He's not going to tweet anymore from the Oval Office. Let's just review some recent tweets from President Trump. Quote, Iran will never have a nuclear weapon, unquote. And we have targeted 52 Iranian sites for every Iranian hostage taken at the embassy years ago. And AOC and, and 
plus four, whoever they are, said there that that he's committed war crimes. Can we check their their security clearances, please? Do background checks on them. I bet you none of them could even pass a background check clear enough to drive a school bus. I would say you're correct. 301 days. Hey, Oil and listen, gas, by the way, on, not even on. affected I got to talk about something before we get into this sound drill, baby we're drill. play. Ladies and gentlemen, we got about 10 and a half months. We have to get off our asses. We have to take the gloves off and we got to hit the libs hard. Yep. We have to make this an epic victory in November. We got to take back the house. We got to neuter Pelosi, Nadler, and Schiff, and we got to keep that Senate. We got to stack the the Senate. We need to win more judges and have Trump place more judges in the courts, just like he did the ninth. Supreme he split Court the ninth. would be great. And 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 when when it's time for Ruth Buzzy Ginsburg to to sit down, it's time to stick another conservative on the bench. So. Donna, we got something cool that we want to play for everybody. Yeah, an interview I did just a few days ago on WORD, because we're going to do this... Um, word. The word. Word the up. Word, yes. Word up. With the great Bobby Mack, the afternoon guy there, and he's going to be at the South Carolina Tea Party Coalition Convention in Greenville as well. That's right. But a little cross-promotion here, mm-hmm. and That's we right. are going to be emceeing it because, yeah. you know, you mentioned Jerry Nadler. Jerry Nadler said we cannot rely on an election to solve our problem. So we have to put an end to this, folks. Like Don just said, these guys hate America first. We have to take America back. Greenville, South Carolina. And here's my interview with Bobby Mack. Hello, campers. Happy New Year. Greetings, welcome, salutations, and Thursday alohas in this holiday-shortened work week. Welcome in. Here we go, getting underway with the 5 o'clock follies on the Bobby Mack Show. The most heavily commuted as well as most heavily congested hour of the program. Great to have you along. Uh, as we kick off a brand new year, 2020, uh, we want to give you a, a little heads up that you need to mark on your calendar the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday of January 17th through the 19th, right here in Greenville at the Embassy Suites Hotel as 106.3 WORD and Jeff Lynch Furniture invite you to help keep America great with our Rock the Red USA event. There is a stellar lineup of individuals who will be speaking on all of the issues that are of importance to you. And one of those individuals is joining me now, and it may be a name and certainly a face, that would be familiar to you, especially if you spent time in the Northeast. Uh, that is Donna Fiducia, former Fox News anchor and longtime New York broadcaster as well. Donna, welcome to the show. Happy New Year to you. Bobby Mack, Happy New Year to you. It's great to be on with you today. It is my pleasure to have you here. Uh, we're looking forward to having you down here, Donna. I, I, I noticed in reviewing your bio, uh, you were New York's first TV helicopter traffic reporter at WNBC TV uh, back in 1995, and uh, uh, you, you actually uh, started uh, helicopter traffic reporting with the N copter from WNBC, uh, where you worked with uh, Howard Stern and the late Don Amos, and I know you were saddened by his passing recently. He he really did some great work, and there is really. Nobody else, I think, that did a better interview than Don Imus, and he was very cutting edge. And then Howard Stern sort of took Don Imus to the next level, essentially. And well, I'm looking at your bio, Bobby Mack, and you were uh, you worked at WMCA. You were the competition there. Were you a good guy? I I, I was uh, one of the good guys hey. uh, briefly <laughs> in the last incarnation when uh, when uh, Good Guys Radio, uh, the first on the dial. Uh, WMCA was uh, uh, about to uh, to transition out of music radio into talk radio. Uh, I, this was uh, this was way back, uh, right after electricity was invented in uh, <laughs> in <too>. 1969. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I'm thinking it's so funny because I'm talking to you in our studio line that we have from our ranch in uh, western Georgia, just west of Atlanta, wow. Georgia. We have a 62-acre horse ranch now. I've moved down from New York with my uh, my 
best friend and my husband, Don Nguyen. And we have this studio set up because Don actually is an audio guy. He did audio for Marshall Tucker. He's a professional wow. musician. He's going to be emceeing the Rock the Red USA at rocktheredusa.com. Get together in a couple weeks in Greenville. But I have to call him up to tell him, you know, to ask him, how do I do this technically? Because I'm used to <laughs> editing with a razor blade, you know? I mean, that's pretty much what I did. Yeah. And you and I both have rock and roll beginnings. So how do we get to a situation where we're going to be at a get-together where nobody is going to be feeling sorry that Julian Castro dropped out of the 2020 <laughs> Democrat race today? <laughs> who uh, another one exactly. of the, uh, the who? also another one of the also rants and uh, and sleepy joe uh, creepy uncle joe biden the hair sniffer doing his best over the holidays to make sure that he de-incentivizes anybody who might have thought Did about you hear voting what he for said? him Did Tell, you hear what he said about coal, coal miners coal miners they should yeah. learn to become uh, computer programmers <laughs> And coal miners make like a hundred thousand dollars a year, right. and we're going to tell them yeah. to quit their jobs. And they have no interest in programming, nor should they. There are many people like Mark Rowe that want to do dirty jobs, and coal mining is one of them. And it's a great job. And these are the people that made America great, and we're going to make America great again, January seventeenth to nineteenth at the Rock the Red USA at RockTheRedUSA dot com get together it's uh it's it's going to be a great event uh people will be speaking on all of the the topics that are buzzwords uh, for today immigration mm -hmm. uh the economy and we know how great that's that's going gun control which is certainly uh a top of mind issue given what uh, governor blackface in virginia is up to these days yeah but it's okay uh, if you're canadian if you do blackface that's fine Barack Obama yeah, oh yeah. even uh, endorsed Justin Trudeau. So uh, the hashtag double standard is crazy. Well, you mentioned uh, immigration. Tom Holman is going to be there. Don't you love him, former ICE director? Yes. And, um, yep. and again, we've got a lot of people talking about the threat of Islam as well. Claire Lopez, former CIA. John Guandolo, uh, understandingthethreat.com, as well as Dr. Bill Warner, all talking about the threat of Islam. There will be a lot of other people talking there. In fact, some guy named Bobby Mac McLean is going to be there, too. <laughs> That's true. And, and I'll be speaking on a subject that is near and dear to my heart, and that is bias in media. Because mm -hmm. after the years that I spent in radio, uh, Donna, I, I made the transition to television, starting here in South Carolina, down in Charleston. Uh, went from there to the CBS affiliate in Dallas, from there to uh, the ABC affiliate in Washington, uh, from there to uh, a station uh, that, that you may see occasionally, Channel 2, WSB in Atlanta, yep. and, and then uh, made a stop for about a year at CNN back in the days when they actually did news rather than propaganda. So <laughs> you and I both have seen up close and personal exactly what transpires in these TV newsrooms. You no, know, it's funny. I'm reading Cheryl Atkinson's book, and she yep. does it to the hilt because she did it on a national and an international basis. I saw it in New York. I was lucky enough, and you and I really, Bobby, have very similar backgrounds. We made the transition from rock and roll, and we saw the light into television, and we've done that exactly. 180. We're more conservative, obviously, and it's not even conservative anymore. It's, to me, American. And why do we blame America first for everything? It's very disconcerting to me. But I was lucky enough, because I did the helicopter... I said to right. uh, I said I was over at NBC at the time helicopter traffic reporting and again I did do the first television helicopter uh, traffic reporting for NBC and the guy who produced the eleven o'clock news for NBC locally in New York City was a guy named mm -hmm. Dan Foreman and he produced Howard Stern's movie But Bongo Fiesta <laughs> so he says to me one day he goes to me so Donna uh, do you think you have the credibility to do news after I you know I told him I wanted to come out of doing helicopter traffic reporting. I don't want to fly right. anymore. I'm not, I'm not into sure. that. And so he goes, I go to him, you, you produce but bongo fiesta and you're asking me <laughs> you're asking if me. I have credibility. I have any credibility. I yeah. know. <laughs> but that's how I made my jump. But you and I actually have very similar backgrounds. I guess I am the, uh, the female Forrest Gump of broadcasting because things just <laughs> happen. Things just happen to come along and and, uh, you know, then I went to Channel 5, and then Roger Ailes saw me there, and he hired me at the right. Fox News Channel, which was just starting up. You know, ironically enough, we're in the new year here, but a new decade. I did the Y2K anchor 
of the of the decade rollover oh, or the millennium yeah. rollover. Yeah, and David, we're all going to die. Yeah, yeah, really. And I'm thinking I'm one block <laughs> from Times Square. I'm going to die. And, and David Lee Miller was my was my reporter. He's just a wonderful reporter. He's been all over the Middle East. Just the greatest guy. And he's out there in these throngs of people. And I'm feeling <laughs> sorry for him. But I'm like, okay, I'm glad I'm in the studio. But I actually right. anchored it in Fox had, you know, went on to have some big, huge show where they would do this big thing and, and have this big, uh, you know, New Year's show. And this year they didn't do it. I don't know why, but um, yeah, I've been I don't know there, why so. either. Yeah. In fact, I think you may have worked with a good friend of mine, uh, the late, great Kevin Matheny. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yep, I yep. knew Kevin, Kevin too. Kevin and I worked together uh, at uh, Wibbage at uh, WIBG down the road in Philly. Yep, I knew Kevin and... Um, Boy, it's it's amazing how many people. There were a bunch. Actually, Charleston is where I used to vacation, so I'm sure that I saw you. I love Charleston, South Carolina, Hilton Head, and of course Myrtle Beach, where where the um, the whole thing that uh, that we're doing now was originally started was the Myrtle right. Beach South Carolina Tea Party Coalition Convention. Donald Trump was there for a couple of years in a row and it was so funny because we emceed it one year and we're like, okay, we're done. It's Monday. We're going home. We see the <laughs> Trump. We see the Trump jet flying into the Myrtle Beach Airport and we look at each other and go, oh, I got to go back to work. And we left. Right. <laughs> We yeah. Well, Little did we know incredible. he was going to be the one I that was, won. <laughs> I was I was fortunate enough, Donna, to have uh, then candidate Trump in the studio with me, following his victory here in the uh, first in the South South Carolina GOP presidential primary uh, back in uh, in 2016, and it was really a treat to be able to to meet the man and and get an idea of what he's like as a person, uh, because it is radically different uh, than the the uh, the candidate that you see. Uh, on the campaign trail, and and certainly uh, the portrait that is painted of Donald J. Trump by the media. Well, you know, I I trade stocks during the day now, too. In fact, another Mm -hmm. all-time high today on the S&P and the Dow, but, you know, it's a recession. Anyhow, so I watch (laughs) a lot of times when Trump speaks, and then I, I, just for fun, put on CNN, and I'm like, are you watching the same thing I'm watching? He's presidential, he's poised, he's he is calling the shots. Everybody jumps when he, you know, when he speaks and they ask how high on the way up world leaders. Yep. And yet he's totally vilified. And it, it really is amazing to me. And I just can't wait until hopefully these reports come out and we start to see some people who really it's a coup. There's no doubt about it. This is a coup. It's not no a doubt. coup attempt. It's a coup. And we got to start seeing people led away in handcuffs. Yeah, there are many of us who are waiting uh, uh, with great anticipation for Mr. Durham, uh, who is, in, uh, we understand, in paneling a grand jury to start issuing subpoenas and then indictments and see some of the people who are behind yep. uh, this this not-so-silent coup attempt brought to justice. And it started Fiducia, right former, after he got... Uh, Donna, the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, it's the, the whole impeachment thing started right after he got elected, which goes to show you that it's totally bogus. I hope to see everybody, including meeting you. I think it's going to be awesome, <laughs> uh, Bobby Mack, at the Rock the Red USA. Find all the information, rocktheredusa.com, in Greenville, at the Embassy Suites Greenville Resort. Meet all these authors, tons of people that you see on the Fox News Channel and many other places. Get them to sign your books. We're going to have Jim Mitchell there. He waterboarded Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, the mastermind of 9-11. He is just the best interviewer and a really wonderful person. He's there. He's going to be there with his book. A lot of people, and I just can't wait to meet everybody again as we're emceeing it this year. Yeah, it is going to be a star-setted event, uh, and we really are looking forward to having you down here, Donna, and, and your husband as well, uh, to emcee the event. Thanks so much for your time today. Great to be able to speak with you, and I look forward to seeing you in just a few weeks uh, here in Greenville. Yes, Bobby Mac, thank you so much. My pleasure. Great to have you along. Really looking forward to meeting him. He's cool. He's a cool dude. I am looking forward to him meeting me. <laughs> no, you're not. Yes, I am. <laughs> and I bet he's looking forward to it. You know, Donna, you get all the interviews. Well, it's because you're working during the day. That's right. And we need to make sure our <laughs> beloved listeners understand that. You know, I am looking forward to... Uh, Greenville. 
to uh, getting in a lot of trouble with John Guando. No, don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Claire Lopez will have to keep you guys in line. Look, let me tell you something. We're going to have Tom Del Beccaro there. Oh, gosh. We're going to have Claire Lopez there. It's going to be like... We're going to have Trevor Loudon A train there. wreck. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave... I, I'm not working off a script, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going by memory here. Trevor Loudon. Mm-hmm. We're going to have John Guandolo. Mm-hmm. We're going to have Buzz Patterson. Mm-hmm. Running for Congress out there in California. We're going to have Dr. Rhonda Mormon. Yep. We're going to have Dr. Elena George. Now, mm-hmm. those two are going to make an attempt, along with Claire Lopez, to discipline and rein in Nguyen and Guandolo. But you'll never get a word in edgewise anyhow, because Michael Cutler's going to be there, too. We can have <laughs> Cutler... Talk and Guandolo. Here's what Guandolo and I are going to do, Donna. We, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Okay. We have brought Vicks Vapor Rub. Oh no. And we're going to smear it all over the doorknobs in the hotel. What is it? What is this like a, a college prank night? It's is Guandolo it's and Newen. And then you throw into the mix Buzz Patterson. Are you kidding me? I know. Tom Del Beccaro is going to be embarrassed. Yes, he beyond is. his wildest dreams. When we short sheet his bed. <laughs> At least we're not in Myrtle Beach this time, so Guandola won't feel compelled to jump in the ocean in January. No, but you know, we got him coming pool, up later though. tonight. I'm going to ask him what color Speedo he's going to bring. <laughs> I bet you Because I've got mine packed. <laughs> you are so strange. There's... I want to see Cutler in a Speedo. No, no, I don't. I'll go blind. <laughs> But if you go to rocktheredusa.com, you can see the entire lineup, find out the hotel, and and it's Embassy Suites. Embassy Suites, Suites, Greenville, South Carolina. If you live within 400 miles of Mm -hmm. Greenville, South Carolina, you better damn well be there. You know what's unbelievable? Donald Trump showed up for this two years in a row, like three or four years ago, three and four years ago. And what do we do? We left because he showed up on Monday. So he knew we were that on our way to the parking lot. We had to lot. go to work, and he flew in we over. We saw us the Trump in the Trump jet plane fly in, and we're just hey, uh, and we like James oh, Bostic is going to be there. Oh, very cool. Danny Hamilton and Angie Hamilton are going to be there with the Trump bus. The Trump bus is going to be there. We're trying to get some of the Trumps to come, but we'll we'll see. That might happen. It and might happen. Kevin, I want to put some mayonnaise on a sandwich. White <laughs> is going to be there too. <laughs> Kevin likes mayonnaise. He's not supposed to. You guys watch Undercover Brother. You're going to know what we're talking about. (laughs) Smart Brother. Kevin White's going to be there. We have a lot of fun with him. We had him on a couple of weeks ago talking about his book. K. Carl Smith's going to be there, too. K. Carl Smith. Hey. Frederick Douglass Republican. Yeah, you are. Guandolo. Yep. K. Carl. See, K. Carl Smith acts very cool, very mature. Until? Until Guandolo <laughs> and Nguyen are lighting farts. Oh, jeez. I'm thinking I'm going to go to bed after we finish emceeing this. No, I'm you're gonna not. Worn out. You're going to be laughing at us. I know you. But we're going to be there Friday night. There's a dinner for everybody who buys tickets. We can meet you and, and say hi to everybody. And I'm really looking forward to this. because That's it is a black a great... tie speedo night. No, it's not. It's, it's really a good time to, <laughs> you know, talk with like-minded people. But it's a catalyst. And then it's a, I, I guess it should be a way for you know for you to get energized to go out for the rest of the year. And we got to get Trump elected. And we got to get the Republicans back in power in Congress. I am going to do something no your one else has done. I'm going to do something. We only got 30 seconds. Uh-oh. I'm going to do something no one else has ever done, Donna, what? at this convention. What? I am simultaneously going to have Dr. Rhonda Mormon. Mm-hmm. And Dr. Elena George Uh take my pulse (laughs) at the same time. And we're going to see if they come up with the same Same answer. And I'm going to have Suzanne Shattuck (laughs) jot down the the results of that test. She can look it over. Okay. We need to get on with the show here. We'll be talking to Buzz Patterson, the aforementioned Buzz Patterson, who carried the nuclear football for Bill Clinton and claims Trouble he Baker lost number it three four. times. Yep, he's running for Congress out in the Sacramento area, California seventh, folks. We got to flip that seat. Mark Walters also coming up. Armed American Radio and John Guandolo, understanding the threat. Troublemaker number two, it's Guandolo. Com- it's all coming up next on Cowboy Logic Radio. Cowboy Line.
Logic.us.